So, Carl, would you consider yourself to be eccentric? I consider myself to be unique, which is just another word for yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Hopefully it's charming, though. <laughs> the annals of British history are littered with extraordinary tales of rich, eccentric dickheads who spent pretty much their entire lives being weird assholes to everybody they met. Few are weirder, though, than John Mitten, a man who turned eccentricity into an art form. So, John Mitten was a rich guy. Yes, he was born the modern-day equivalent of a multi-millionaire thanks to inherited wealth and land, which basically allowed him to spend his entire life doing whatever the fuck he wanted. Uh, to such an extent, he didn't really have any sort of formalised education because he refused to listen to his teachers and was in fact kicked out of several prestigious schools for reasons ranging from pranks to picking a fight with his own headmaster. So he tried to fight his own headmaster. Yeah, which I think is a very understandable thing. <laughs> I think there's a lot of people who are like, yeah, I could have fucking swung for my headmaster at some point. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't think, <laughs> I don't think anyone out there in Britain grew up like thinking their headmaster was a good guy. I know he's a prick. I know he had a tough job, but he was a prick. <laughs> don't care. John Mitten took that to his logical extreme and picked a fist fight with his headmaster and got kicked out of school. Um, this didn't really stop him from pursuing education because he did somehow manage to get into university, which he was also thrown out of because he wasn't really all that interested in his studies. Something exemplified by the fact he reportedly took 2,000 bottles of port to university with him, all of which he polished off before he got thrown out a year later. That's a lot of port. It was, yeah, and he threw a lot of wild parties which resulted in him being thrown out. And his love of wild parties was something matched only by his love of hunting. So I imagine a lot of people back then really enjoyed hunting anyway. They did, and it was seen as the pastime for the rich and influential. But Mitten took hunting just a little bit more seriously than his peers, uh, to the point where he had a 2,000 strong army of hunting dogs, um, the most pampered members of which were given free reign of Mitten's own house and fattened on, I shit you not, sausages and champagne. Which is a pretty good gig for the dogs, uh, in addition, if he couldn't find anything to hunt, he would have game imported from France to hunt on his property. So he'd pay to have birds shipped over from France, which were then released onto his property so he could hunt them. And if he wasn't able to do that, he would round up stable boys and get them to find rats, which he would release onto a frozen lake near his house and hunt them on ice skates. In addition to all that, if he was in his house and happened to hear ducks outside, sometimes he would just sprint outside and try and chase them with his gun even if he heard them when he was asleep, <laughs> um, which would get him so excited he'd strip off naked to chase them across his land. What the hell? Strip off naked all the time. God, I, well, I guess it made him lighter, a bit more aerodynamic. I guess. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Also as well, remember, this guy was insane. He was very eccentric, so stripping off start bollock naked to chase some ducks was just something he did for fun. And it's something that his own employees and people who live near him and his peers just came to expect from him. Because yeah, that's, that's just Mitten. Which is what he does. He just really likes hunting those ducks. And he got classic so excited. John. Yeah, <laughs> classic John. Got so excited, he stripped off and chased some ducks. It's like how like you get um, when you go to uni and stuff. You get like students who are known for certain things. Yeah, I'm known for the student who smokes weed or hosts parties or just. Everyone has their own thing. Yes, um, reminds me a lot of um, a friend of mine. He was the guy who threw parties, but he threw like themed parties, and he would turn his entire student accommodation into like some sort of weird mystical wonderland. Like one time I went round, it's oh it's a it's a Hawaiian shirt party. So oh, you wear a Hawaiian shirt. No no. He he went full commitment to it and he bought plastic palm trees and everything Jesus. and played Hawaiian music and covered his entire flat in this stuff and made like a punch bowl and like he got like, everyone had straw hats. It's like no, this is like one evening and you bought all this stuff. He's like, yeah it's great. He loves it. How'd you do that as a student? Uh, <laughs> How did you afford land. this? Poundland. Poundland is always the answer. <laughs> I remember from like our house parties, like if we did Halloween, we just go you to You used to yeah, take Poundland. it super seriously too. Like you had the, the Pokemon themed one. Oh yeah, that's for someone's birthday. Oh. That was amazing. Yeah, for a birthday party, everyone rocks up dressed like Pokemon. It's fucking insane. Speaking of wild parties, Mitten was known to throw those as well. Partly because he just enjoyed drinking, but mostly because it allowed him to indulge in his other favourite hobby of pranking people. And it's noted that one of his favourite pranks was to dress up like a highwayman and rob his guests as they arrived. What the fuck? <laughs> Which is a bit of a dick move, but again, 
The scope and scale of these parties cannot be overstated, so a lot of his guests kind of put up with it because they knew if they rocked up to his party, there was going to be a lot of booze flowing. Yeah. So that they kind of put up with Mitten's eccentricity because, uh, yeah, he might pretend to be a robber and hold us up at gunpoint, but man, does he throw a good party. It's, it's worth it for the booze. <laughs> it's worth it for the booze. And it's at one of these wild parties where Mitten's most famous practical jokes took place when he rode into the party when he's in full swing, bareback. I'm assuming you mean on a horse. No, I mean bareback, on a bear. <laughs> Mitten had a pet bear called Nell, um, which he put a saddle on and then rode into the middle of his party when everyone was drunk and reared it up like a horse. Oh my God. At which point he accidentally hit the bear with his spurs, because, oh yeah, Mitten was dressed in full hunting garb, um, angering the bear, which then mauled his leg. Oh God. Which Mitten um, walked off. Well, yeah, he also owned a bear. <laughs> As you do. <laughs> because if, you, if you're rich and eccentric, why not own a bear? And again, his guests put up with this because man, were those some good parties. <laughs> so, we imagine like, the risk you've got to take, the calculated risk of, I might get robbed and I might get mauled by a bear. Well, to be honest, this guy kind of sounds a bit like a prick. Yeah, and his peers didn't really like him all that much, so they tolerated him due to the extravagance with which he celebrated. But he was apparently very well liked by the local people who live near his estate uh, due to his habit of burying money and forgetting where he left it, which allowed them to go and dig it up after the fact. And when he wasn't burying money for people to find, he also just gave it away. Uh, for example, when he wanted to become an MP, um, he paid everybody in town uh, to vote for him, which resulted in him obviously winning that election. And they decided that he didn't want to be an MP anymore and just quit. And local children especially were said to love Mitten due to the fact he would pay them to roll down a big hill near his house just because he found it funny. So as you might imagine, local people love this guy because they could just randomly be given the modern day equivalent of a couple of quid for just standing there or rolling down a hill. Yeah or voting for him, or just find a big pile of money on the floor that he buried and forgot about. You said he's an eccentric guy, so yes. there must be like some other stuff that he did as well. Yeah, one of the most um, like famous things he would do is intentionally crash his carriages, seemingly for fun. And he was said to take great pleasure in just riding carriages into turnstiles and things like that, just to see what happened. Speaking of which, another favourite hobby of Mittens was introducing people to the act of crashing carriages by asking them while taking them for a ride. So, have you ever been in a carriage crash? And if they responded no, he would crash the carriage on purpose so they could experience it. And I'm now just imagine if Mitten got transplanted into the modern day, how much scarier that would have been of, oh, so, have you ever been in a car crash? Can't say I have. Oh, it's fine. <laughs> After hearing about how much he enjoys crashing his carriage and scaring other people... <laughs> On purpose. He's, yeah, he's, he's definitely pretty crazy. Yeah, he's not really a guy who cared much for his own physical well-being, something epitomised uh, by a famous story about him when he was in Calais with some friends and suffered from a horrific bout of hiccups, which he couldn't figure out a way to stop. Uh, at which point, uh, according to eyewitnesses, he set himself on fire and just stood there as they then hit him with sticks to put the fire out. <laughs> and after the fire had gone out, Mitten stood there, charred and burned, noticed that he hadn't got hiccups anymore, and then went to bed. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, that's like one way to get rid of them, I guess. <laughs> it probably works. And they do say you've got to like shock yourself to get rid of hiccups, don't they? And I'm guessing being set on fire and beaten with sticks is quite shocking. <laughs> and Mitten evidently didn't suffer with hiccups for the rest of the evening, though he did have third degree burns along one side of his body which he slept off because he didn't give a fuck. So going back to a topic of conversation from earlier in the video and the, the parties that we would all throw in university, I believe that's why we met, isn't it, Nisha? Yes, because um, the first time I met you was at a Halloween party that uh, I had at my student house and um, I fell down the stairs. Oh, yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> Just fell down the stairs. Classic Nisha. Always falling downstairs. I just remember you sat on the sofa, like, kind of half with your... Because you had the, the orange morph suit, but you had it, like, half off. Cause I just remember you sat there, like, with orange legs. Oh, yeah, because I was wearing, like, a weird um, orange morph suit that my housemate at the time had. Because he had... He was the guy who went out in morph suits. So he just borrowed me one. 
And I was like the weird ladder man, so I was all skinny and tall. So I was like this creepy weirdo on the sofa, which I don't look like anymore when I go to house parties. I, I think my favourite was the Pokemon party. That was so good. That was a solid one. I can't remember what I went as for that um, one. I know I was... I don't think I had a costume. I, I was Eevee. I think that might be one I had to turn up to late because I was at work. Yeah. I can't remember. But who was it who dressed up like the Pokedex though? Who took it super it, serious Brad. and turned up as a Pokedex? Brad. Yeah, that <laughs> sounds like him. Turned up as a, like, he went all out and came up as a fucking Pokedex. Uh, well, speaking of which, like, we, there was a couple of years later, I think there was another house party. Went to ask, it was a Disney-themed one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. In the weird swag house I lived in that had two kitchens and five fridges. I'm not making this up. We had five fucking fridges in this house. That was so weird. And it was like, and everyone just rocked up to that one and nobody could tell what anyone else was wearing. <laughs> because we were all uni students so we all made really bad costumes i think um i think i was simba because another guy was rafiki and yeah. he tried to lift me up and it didn't work very well oh yeah we tried to do the, the simba thing and i think i was all painted in black and white because i was um the rule was you had to get you had to call dibs on a character yeah and i wasn't really a big fan of disney so i just responded on the last day oh shit uh, what was the last Disney thing I watched? Oh, it was that Paper Man short. Yeah. But it's all in black and white. So I just painted myself grey and went in black and white and held a stack of paper, <laughs> which I then took to the nightclub and made into paper airplanes <laughs> and just threw into the dance floor. And I remember the bouncer coming when we stopped doing that. You know, it's someone in the eye. It's like, oh, okay, I'm really sorry. Um, can you hold my paper for me? And he held it and I just left. <laughs> just <laughs> didn't come back. So we can talk about this because that Disney party... He's probably the most scared I've ever been. So to set the scene for people who maybe watch these videos but don't follow any of the other work for the people behind the camera, which you should do, because they all make good stuff. Um, Nisha, Adam, Brad and Lucas all do good stuff outside of the main Fact Fiend channel. Um, Lucas ha has bright, colourful hair and has done for the entirety of the 10 years I've known him, except for this party we went to, the aforementioned Disney party, where he went as Fix It Felix. Yeah. And what he did is he dyed his hair brown, so just a regular colour, <laughs> and shaved off his big ginger beard yep. and took his glasses off. And the reason I'm mentioning this is because I remember almost having a nervous breakdown trying to recognise who he was. Because I saw him at the house party and I was like, I know that guy, but I don't know where I know him from. <laughs> and I spoke to him for a good 20, 30 minutes where I went, Carl, it's Lucas. I'm like, oh my God, it is! <laughs> So if we can get Lucas's permission to put up some photos of him, like, maybe now and then then, yeah. to show how different he yeah. looks. I was like, I know that guy, and I don't know where I know yeah. him from. It's like, Carl, it's Lucas. I'm like, oh my, you look so it, different. It, what the yeah, hell? It was crazy. It freaked me it out. It was crazy. Because I was like, is that Lucas? It doesn't look like Lucas. Is it? I don't want to feel rude by saying, is it Lucas? <laughs> but it really looks like Lucas. Actually, it doesn't look like him at all. <laughs> it looks it's so different. It freaked me out. <laughs> And then everyone could tell it was me because like, it was that tall, weird guy with like bad haircuts. That's Carl. <laughs> How I've changed, eh? How I've changed.